Hello, everybody. It is 11.30 on a Tuesday, I was about to say afternoon, morning. When you get up at like six and you have kids like myself, and I'm sure many of you do, um, 11.30 does feel like the afternoon. In fact, I just had an early lunch. God, dear. Sound like my parents. When did that happen? Anyway, here we are, 11.30 a.m., in Los Angeles, which means uh, wherever you are in the world, I'm sure it's considerably later because we're on the earlier side. Who do we have here today? We have Ray, we have Mark, we have Johnny, we have Damien, Don, Greg, um, Sachi, or yeah, Sachi, Adam, Corwin, Gordon, Raphael, Pete, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hello, oh, hello, Filippo and Nadia. Um, loads of people, John, Al Acoustic. I'm going, I'm doing well, thanks, Al. Uh, Jimmy, Sir Egbert, <laughs> Lunamus Brilliance, Patrick Larson, Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Um, so we've got, we've got some multi-tracks here, which we've done a lot of, um, little empire tracks cause I co-wrote and produced and played on these tracks. So, and they're out on Spitfire, the label. And, uh, so Lily is the singer. She's absolutely incredible. Um, she teaches vocals out here now. What I like about these tracks is it's a real combination of program stuff and live instruments. So it's, I wouldn't say it's a challenge to mix, but what it is is a good opportunity to, you know, test your skills with live instruments and program instruments. And uh, let me just go into the all here and let's make these all smaller. So if you haven't already, please download the tracks. There's a link below. I've never done this song before. It's actually a really good song. And I was actually quite surprised yesterday when we were thinking about what song to do. Eric played this one back and I was like, we haven't done this one before? I was quite surprised. So before we get stuck in, let's listen to the mix I did, a hybrid mix I did seven years ago now, seven years ago with in Pro Tools through the um through the console and this is back in like early just got started with youtube i don't even think we were thinking about youtube much beyond like doing the old lesson every now and then um and yes you're right little empire are a great band hi timmy um hey kyle um kyle says mixing live and program instruments is always a challenge i agree but it's um um, but do, 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 do. not pit heading to, uh, oh, is dry. I hope I'm doing marvelously well, says Edward. Edward. Yes, I am. I hope you are. Hey, spirit. Oh, spirit. Glad you're all looking forward to it. So this is that anything goes. We're going to use whatever plugins we like. So let's give this a listen. This is Burn by Little Empire. This is the hybrid mix I did seven years ago. Oh, 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 oh,
So what I like about it, it's got a lot of strings and stuff in it as well. Live drums with some program stuff, um, guitars, keys, string arrangement. has even a glockenspiel in it, a bunch of synths. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be quite a fun one to mix. So if you haven't already, please download the multitracks. Um, she's a great singer. Yes, I agree. So if you see directly underneath there is a link to download the multitracks. So please do it there. Um, if you haven't already, please um, join us in the Academy. We will definitely do some mixed critiques of this one. So for all the Academy members, we'll definitely do a mixed tr critique. Have a quick listen. So here's the live kick. Let's just go through and listen to some tracks. Now, the, the drummer, it's our little kit here. Definitely wasn't the most consistent, as you can see. And I think what happens with a lot of drummers when they play like a four on the floor groove, where they're doing kick and snare together, that gets that definitely sorts out the men from the boys and the women from the girls because it it's quite a technique to play that da, 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 and get the feel accurate. So here's here's kick and snare. Let's have a quick listen. We're just going to put the organic elements together. Cool. Now I'm going to throw in the hat, and I'm also going to pan it. Um, I'm doing it audience perspective. You can do it whatever way you like. I know drummers like to do it from drummer's perspective, which is fine, but I'm doing it audience perspective. Let's go to a section where the hi-hat is playing, which is actually here. All right, so I'm just going to bring... I brought it down a little bit. Okay, let's throw, throw in the overheads. That's essentially the live drums. I don't know... Oh, there's one tom part just around about here. Cool. Let's pan those around. So I'm going to bring the rack about 20% slightly, slightly to the right hand side. And again, if you're doing, if you're doing, audience, uh, drummer's perspective, you can do the opposite. But I, not really a drummer. Cool. So that is our basic live drum sound mix. Okay, so we have some samples and stuff that can go in it. And 
I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the live drums. Like so we like the live drums, and then add the samples and stuff in it as well. The samples were quite quite useful in this mix because it got really dense with like tons of synths and like really really aggressive elements. So let's have a check this out. But we're going to pretend we don't have them yet and then incorporate them as we need them. I am start specifically starting off with the drums because I'm going to that chorus in my mind and I'm going to get it to be really super aggressive. So the first thing I'm going to do is before I do any cleverness is just grab an EQ and get a little bit more aggressive on those drums while listening to all the drums together. So let's go to like 60 and boost it. Let's go to some 350, which is default so and just cut. And then you see about 2.5 on a like a classic rock or just a pop rock for some click. So if you want to hear it in solo, here's just the kick on its own. Now, as you can see, he's pretty uneven. He's, he, he's, he's, he's a little tentative on his foot when he's playing the snare because it's playing the kick and the snare together. He gets very tentative. He, he's like... And that it happens quite a lot with drummers. I've, I've worked with so many drummers, some really famous ones, that as soon as you get into any kind of groove where the kick and snare are playing on top of each other, they don't play with the same verocity as they would when they're just laying into the kick or laying into the snare. In this instance, he's, he's playing the snare fairly well, but he's really tentative on the kick. So I'm going to have to get a little, have some fun with it. So I've done some generic EQ here, which is pulling out the low mids, boosting the low lows. I'll probably change this to a four band EQ now, just because I want to pull out some like 80 to 100 area where there's going to be a build up. So, do, 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 do. So, I'm going to. Now, the reason why I'm doing like the 80 to 100 area is where the bass is going to sit. And I typically just pull that out probably like this, quite aggressively. So, what happens is now we get a nice peak in the kick area right the low lows but we're not also boosting an area which is going to be in the way of the bass guitar you can get a little bit more crazy if you like and go to like 110 and do sort of something like that you see what it's happening now now i've got a nice big boost in here and also when you've got multiple kick microphones you can end up getting a real build up in that area with just the phase shift ever so slightly So this is a before, and here's an after. Yes, well, all, any, all the Academy members, um, if you download this, we will do reviews of the track. So that'll be a fun one to do um, for the rest of the month. So if you're an Academy member, please send it in and we will review your mixes. So I think now that we've done some EQ stuff and we've boosted the areas that we want quite dramatically and cut the low mids, um, let's do a little bit of compression. Let's go and grab something, something in that area. Uh, 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 uh. Barely touching the light hits, but trying to get those bigger ones. It's not that there's a lot of spill. The reason why there's spill is because he's playing, and I'll explain it one more time, he's playing really soft and tentatively. He was like... Doop, 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 doop. 
it, I'm sorry, I keep explaining it. Maybe you just tuned in. So what it is is when he was playing that, ah, da, 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 he played the kick like they're so soft. So he's mashing the snare. So like there's so much more of every other drum in the mix than there is the kick. You can see the occasional time where he actually plays it normally. It seems super loud. It's not that he's digging in. It's just that he's like, da, 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 da. he was a little terrified of that beat. So I'm just doing as much as we can with that, and then we're going to use, uh, then we're going to use uh, a sample. Quite frankly, this is one of those instances you haven't, don't have much choice. He was a young drummer. I mean, this is seven years ago. He may have been 19 at the time. But to your point, I'm not going to go any more aggressive on the compression because it would make no sense. I'll just bring up too much bleed. Yeah, I'm listening to the signal and it's not cutting out, so um, it must just be on your side. Unfortunately, I'm, everybody is, uh, everybody's uh, internet is different. We can't control how your internet is. So I think, you know, that's a compromise for me. It's not absolutely amazing, but it's we have samples here that we're going to use. So I have this one here, which I'm using with the live kit which is actually uh, something I put in using addictive. Now I'll bring it down really quiet and we'll just blend it in. Now I just want to check the phase on this, see if it's good. It's not. It's not, the phase is not good. So, did you hear that? You hear the cancellation of the low end? So we're going to take this kick here, the live kick, actually, because I believe it's inverted, and just invert it. Now, when I was mixing on the console, I probably just hit invert. Uh, uh, uh. So you're going to hear a before and after. So this is a before. Did you hear that phase cancellation? Could everybody hear it? Yeah, you can see it in the waveform, but you, I heard it and then we went in. See what I mean? Great, you guys could hear it. Guys and girls can hear it. All right, so now I'm going to reverse it, flip it, and now listen to it. Great, all the low ends come back. Cool. So now, now we're starting to get like a much better, you know, kick sound. The snare wasn't bad at all for a live snare. Now, I'll, let's put in the uh, addictive snare we have. We have another another kick element as well that we're going to bring in. But before we get to that, we'll bring in the snare. We're going to do a lot more clever stuff here. We're going to definitely group things together and EQ them together and all that kind of fun stuff. But let's get to a point where, you know, it's nice to be able to get something that's fairly decent using the organic drums and, and sneaking in a little bit of sample here and there. So now I'm flying in the snare. So I like that. It's it's similar to what we have. It's not exactly the same, but it's tuned in a similar range. So it, it does sound quite natural if I put those elements together. And the good thing about Addictive is I use Melodyne to, to um, get all of the MIDI information. And the great thing about the MIDI information that Melodyne collects is it can keep the inherent feel of the track. Now what I did is I just reduced the dynamic range because he's overly dynamic on his kick, but I just brought it back so it still was dynamic and still sounded like a human being playing, but not quite as much. And that's really the secret. If you are gonna if you're forced into a situation like this where you have to use a sample, you want you don't want it to be just like the same velocity each time. Or else it will just sound like a machine gun. Look at Eric. Did you do that? I'm on it. 
Eric's on it. He just, uh, here's the sample placing video using Melodyne. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. I really appreciate it. I've just found over the years, I've used everybody's different plugin, um, you know, virtual um, plugins and all that kind of stuff. Melodyne does the best job of grabbing the MIDI information. Everybody has it, or not everybody, most people have it built into their plugins. I just go with Melodyne. I know it's another software you have to buy, so don't get me wrong, and I don't get any, there's no, I don't make any money from it, put it that way, but that, that is a reality. Melodyne is really, really good at, uh, at collecting MIDI information. Accurately. Um, yes, is the answer to Grobo Clone. It doesn't do it as well. Nobody does it as well as Melodyne. Melodyne. I mean, you, if you're used to using your software and you can do it really well, you can ignore me. I've just found that um, they do it better than anybody else. It doesn't mean that it's probably not good enough. And if you know workarounds on your software, it doesn't matter, does it? So it's not a bad, fairly organic sound. We haven't really lent too heavily on the samples yet. Now, there is a moment, I believe, um, do, 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 that kick sample comes in at a different time. Um, these kicks come in at a different time as well. Yeah, so the rest of the drum stuff here is all like alternative stuff that comes in um, on different sections of the song. So we've let's process this now. So now that we've done some basic work on this, I'm going to combine these kicks together in one. So I'm just I won't need a stereo. Well. Actually, I am. I'm going to make it stereo because the reason why I'm going to make it stereo is because there's a bit of ambience in that kick, that addictive one. Not much, but a little tiny bit. So I'm creating a stereo bus here. And I'm going to make it three and four input. And we'll just call that kick sub. You can call it kick group, kick auxiliary, kick bus, kick sub, all of the different variations. So we'll listen to them together, just for schnitz and schniggles. Pretty nice. Now, I'm going to do a similar EQ, a global EQ, to what you just saw me do earlier on the, um, on the individual live kick itself. So I'm going to get... I'm not afraid to get really, gr um, really drastic on this stuff. If you watched my interview with Joe Ciccarelli last week or the week before, he is not afraid to go nuts. So let's have a listen to 65 hertz boost. Do some 350 cut, some more. I'm at about 3K, 2.5. Turn it off. Back on. Not doing any high pass at the moment. If I'm going to do some high pass, I might go down to about 20 often. And it's possible as the mix comes together, but at the moment you'll see why not. There are other kick elements as well. But yeah, I mean, effectively remember as well, when you're boosting things dramatically either side of it, you're also high passing. See, because what's happening here is I'm exaggerating. I'm turning up 60 hertz two times. Therefore, everything above and below it is being reduced dramatically. Because if this was where it was in the mix, then you turn up 60 hertz. Now it becomes this loud, so you might turn it down. Effectively, you've turned down other frequencies. Remember that boosting and cutting are versions of the same thing. If you're cutting a lot of frequencies, you're turning the sound down. If you're uh, boosting a lot of frequencies, you're turning it up. So if I do this, I've effectively just cut all of that, haven't I? That's why it always gets interesting where people get into boost and cut as a conversation. I think the only reason why boost and cut was always a contentious issue in the days of analog was because um, I'm grouping my kicks here. So we'll just call that kick. Obviously, those two elements. Um, I'm gr um, was because, you know, there was so much coloration and there's so little coloration now in the world of digital. We have, so this is a snare group with those three elements.
It's nice. It's a nice blend of the live and of the samples. So let's create another stereo one because you can hear ambience in that snare. So let's maintain it. So now this is going to be our snare sub. Again, could be bus, could be group, could be auxiliary, could be whatever you want to call it. Make that five and six. I'm not doing any individual EQ to it. I could do, but I'm not in this instance. Now what I'm going to do is just grab a global EQ. I have no problem with individually EQing things. I know people look at screens and say, look, you can see this, that, and the other. All I care about is what it sounds like. The reason why I'm not doing that is because I don't think I need to. So if I go to like one, I don't know, let's go to like 150. Some pretty good body. Let's go to typically probably something like seven ish. He gets a little soft on it, doesn't he? So I think there's actually one of the addictives there, which seems a little too quiet to me. Almost like what's going on. So I'm actually going to cheat. Let's cheat and grab. I'm just going to slip. Um, let's cheat and grab a couple of louder snare hits and put them in where I don't have any problem with cheating. So I'm actually putting a couple of louder hits in where it felt like it was getting a little weak. Cool. That one too felt a little weak. Do whatever you can, do whatever you have to do to make it great. Okay, all right, so um, liking that, let's throw the hat in, let's throw the rack in, the floor, the overheads, and the kick, and see what we've got. I haven't done much else. To my point about boosting the EQ, you see now the kick has got so much louder. So just for snitch and sniggles, I'm going to add uh, add some compression. And what I like about, particularly on, we're not making this about waves, we're going to use whatever we want. But what I do like about the waves, our comp, is that the default attack and release time gives us a nice kind of little, sh little attack, slow enough attack. That's nice. Yeah, tad off is fine, but putting in three stronger snares into weaker beats is nothing compared with what, uh, what was done in the 70s to make drums sound good. I think we have this sort of illusion that everybody was a genius in 1975 and now nobody knows what they're doing. You know, some of my best, best friends in the world made those records. For real. I'm working on a project with Jack Douglas as we speak and the kind of stuff they did on drums then and what Shelly Akers did and all those guys cutting and pasting things on tape, you know, re-amping snares with with speakers underneath the snare they even there was even a guy that designed a snare that would play from a gate would actually have a stick that played it and those are on some of your favorite records so please don't be under an illusion that everybody in 1975 was a genius and now 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 we're the first people cheating now it's been done for 
decades. Especially when it comes to dense rock. I mean, as soon as you're into dense rock, you, you, it's a whole different world because we all love John Bonham's drum sound. It's amazing. But, you know, Zeppelin was like one or two guitar parts, made predict usually one guitar part, bass and drums, sometimes two, and it allowed all this beautiful ambience, you know. Da -da 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 -da. Now it's like, you know, guitar sounds are like a wall of death metal, you know. So you've really got to help, you know. Tortilla Man says, he, or they says, I love everybody. Thank you. We love you too, Tortilla Man. <laughs> Cool. All right, so there is a rough, workable drum sound. We're not going to spend hours and hours on it yet. There's probably some room stuff we could do to it, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to start putting the song together. So I, if you're noticing the track, and I'll bring the bass and everything up to where we can see it here um, so we got all the elements that we're doing. There's like a bendy bass part that I play, bendy bass part. So let's create those two bass elements as one. So I'm grouping them together. Oh, and by the way, for those that want to know these are odysseys and they're called the lcd x's it's pretty much where we've settled um or where i've settled for my mixing headphones um they're open back they sound fantastic um i know again i'm going to use that i'm going to use this phrase twice in two days now they're kind of an industry industry standard most of my mixer friends use them um and i've been reluctant but i've got there and uh, i really like them so Let's have a listen to the bendy bass that I did at the beginning. Oh yeah, when you if you're using a sample to just add an evenness to a very uneven performance, that's one thing. If it's the only drum sound, it's different. But this this is a modern track, so it's kind of a bit of everything. So here's my bendy bass. Well, I when I do these live streams, um, Chris, I do this in the box mixing using plugins that anybody can buy. Um, and I'm mixing through my ID44. I don't, don't think you can see it on camera, but I'm using my Audient ID44. My voice is going through the Audient ID44. All the audio is going through the ID44, and I'm using the headphone amp on the Audient ID44. I do that because it's, it's a real-world experience. Oh, yeah, please. Thanks ever so much. Um, oh, we should do a giveaway. We should do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway for a year's membership to the Produce Like a Pro Academy. If you're already a Produce Like a Pro Academy member, which I'm sure many of you are, because it's like three or four hundred of you online at the moment. Please, first of all, please hit the like button. That would be wonderful. Secondly, um, what do we want to know, Eric? Oh, headphones. Do you use headphones? We just had a headphone conversation. If you do use headphones, what headphones do you use? And if you don't use headphones, you can say, no, I use speakers. And there's no right or wrong answer. Eric will... Pick somebody at random. Please hit the like button and let us know. Hello, Gareth. Let us know what headphones you use. And if you don't use headphones, you can say, I use speakers. So you can see I've got a chorus going on on the bass the whole time. Let's have a quick look at that phase relationship. It seems pretty good. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little wonky, isn't it? Now I wonder if that's a straightforward flip the phase. The thing is, it's got one of those. Yeah. So I think what we need to do is drag the timeline back. How much do you reckon? Like how many samples is that? Only thirteen. So I'm going to take the DI and drag it back thirteen samples. So you can, some people do this by, by literally moving the file, which is okay. You can totally do that. I don't. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to grab time adjuster and just move the top one back, flip the polarity, 
and bring about 13 millisecond, uh, 13 samples. Now let's see if it gets fatter. Now take it off. Interesting. It's like a variation of a theme because, you know, that, that feels like it could go all the way back here. If that delays that, we're just going to try and get this phase as good as possible. 118. Let's see what this is here. That's 100. I'm going to try like 105 and not flipping the polarity. So 105, somewhere in the middle. Now I'll take the polarity off. Now have a listen. <laughs> It's kind of nice. It's a problem when you use a lot of effect. Now, there's a couple of things like, so if I take those two, let's see where this one's estimating. And this one here, 26, 25, 40. Hmm, I'm going to try like 30. This is always a crapshoot. But you just get it to where it sounds good. There's another trick I'm going to do, which is going to make a lot of this... That's better. That, that's, that's, um, that's where it comes in great. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose the DI only for the low end. So if we just solo the DI... which has also got the chorus on it. The bass amp. So... So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an EQ. Again, um, for me, I've been using Waves, like most professionals, I'm sure you know, we use, we've been using Waves for about 4 million years. Um, so that's kind of our stock, but you can use any stock plugin you like. There is no preference. I'm going to go in there and just kind of pull down, gently high pass out of the kick, like 50, 60. It's not entirely removing all that low end. And then I'm going to go down to about 200 and remove everything above. So now it should just be on the low end. Yeah, four and a half million years. Yeah. Now some gentle compression. It's just a, a grab again. I can grab something um, just stock. It doesn't have to be waves. Um, so what's the stock? What is the stock? Avid one. I can't, don't even remember now. Dyne, D-Y-N. D-Wine compressor. Dyne one. So this is just like equivalent to whatever, whatever D-A-W one you have. Getting between 1 to 3 dB worth of gain reduction. Hello, Outlander. Apparently, it's not, it's not 2.5 million years. It's been 5 million years. I think you can argue about what compressor to use in this situation. I don't need anything particularly coloured. If you want to, you can, but for me, this is a perfect job for a stock compressor. Do we get headphones yet? Who won? Who won? Chasen Insane. Chasen Insane. Chasen Insane, headphones for fine tuning and editing, 8050s, monitors for final mix. Nice, nicely done. Is that 80 as in Audio Technica, the 50s? That's, that's great. Yeah, the Avid stock plugins are great, and so are, so are every stock plugin with every DAW. For this instance, this is all you need. Oh, so that's controlling that. So now what we're going to do with the bass amp is do the opposite. So I'm going to grab, um, grab an EQ. Again, I can drag something stock. Why don't we grab a stock one? Um, and then um, high pass, 
do, 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 do the opposite. So uh, 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 put it in. So at around 200. So this is the reason why I was saying you don't have to worry too much about the phase between the two. You want to get it roughly there between the two elements, the DI and the amp, because we're actually going to spare the amount of the crossover. Now I want to get in at about 750. And we're going to add some nose to it. Have a listen to this. Let's try a little 3K. And now we can actually low pass. Let's put the two elements together. Balance the two things together. I'm hearing some pick, which is nice. I'm hearing the chorusing effect, which is nice. And I'm also hearing, I'm also hearing, God bless it, the, um, the low end, more even. Now, but let's have us into the bass at the front because we've taken all that low end off. Oh, Wilma won the uh, IK Multimedia Max 2 bundle three years ago. Great. I'm actually fine with the not having the low end on that lead part. I might change my mind, and if I do change my mind, we'll automate it. Super chat question. We have a super chat question. What's the super chat question, Eric? From Toshihiko, it is, what is the difference between soft clipping with a clipper mm -hmm. or compressing with a soft knee on a compressor? Oh, they're totally different because the soft knee is just literally like the angle of how the compression comes in. Now, but a soft clip is a, a way of explaining that it's not going to sound harsh. When they say a soft clipper, they're just saying that because they're going, it's not going to like cut it so it goes really aggressive and painful and horrible. It's definitely, I wouldn't say marketing speak, but it's definitely uh, a way of describing, you know, an audible distinction like that's how we hear it it's soft clipping clipping softly but yeah soft knee is uh is is describing how that how the attack of it comes in if you look at some of these compressors like the um like the one that comes free with um with pro tools it's it's kind of nice see they show it there so i get the knee Okay, can you see this? Can you see that where this element of the two come in? Where the so here's the threshold. That's the orange line there. If I adjust the knee, you'll see it soften. If I use it aggressively, you see that? It's like softens how the attack comes in. It's it's it can be subtle, but it can also be really beautiful when used nicely. So it doesn't have this pat 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 feeling. Try it. Yeah, I, I've got an Apogee, which I still use on drums. It's really old. I love it. And it only runs at 48K, but we use it with a track in drums, and it's got a soft clipping in it, and it sounds fantastic. Oh, I love chorus on bass. I, I agree, Lamia. Um, it's fantastic. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bust those elements together on the bass, on the bass. So we'll just call it bass. We can call it bass auxiliary. We call it sub. We call it bus. Now we're going to call it auxiliary just to really confuse all the same thing. So let's make that. Uh, let's make that bus seven. And output those two elements of the bus to seven. It's already more even. We didn't need to limit it or do anything. It was very, very even. But we can put some, we can put some soft compression on it. Um, what can we grab? 
We'll grab the Dyn again. We're going to go back and use the comes free with Pro Tools just to prove that stock ones can work. Now, I know a lot of you don't trust your ears, so you want an auto gain function. I totally understand that. I know there's a lot of people that don't trust what they're hearing. And so they, they, they fall into that, that sort of trap of thinking, you know, well, obviously louder sounds better. Of course it sounds better because you hear more low end and more high end and you're, ha you're happy. But at the same time, I think when you've been doing this a long time, you don't care if the volume changed. Like it dropped there quite dramatically, actually the opposite, but it still sounded the same to me. But I know for many of you, that's confusing. If you've got a plugin, you know, got plugins that have auto game function when you're first learning, totally understand. You might want to use a compressor as an auto gain so that you're not confusing yourself and you're still learning. I mean, even that gentle compression is perfect for me. And I'm not going to do any more dramatic EQ to it yet. It might need some more, but let's not do it yet. Okay, let's see what else we got that we can throw in. So I got uh, keys. You can, guys can fight about Pro Tools as long as you like. I'm just saying it's it's stock, so it would be it is free when you buy it. It's the same with any DAW, just the stock plugins that came in there. But feel free to have a fight about it. <laughs> um, okay, so um, stock because we're upsetting people. The stock plugins that you guys can use. I'm just using it as an example for stock plugins. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the REQ is I'm going to uh, get rid of high pass just out of the way of the bass and for this uh, scratch keys, just to get it out of the way, you know what I mean? I don't know what else uh, other problem, uh, what else is that's going to say, you know? Yeah, stock plugins are fantastic. Um, yeah, go and get grab yourself a, a st any of your stock plugins. I'm u I use the Wave stuff because it's what I grew up using from the mid '90s. But uh, you know, I'm also using the stock EQs here, and whatever stock ones you've got, it'll be great. So I'm keeping it warm and fat and filling in a gap. At the moment, I'm not quite sure what that synth is going to be. It's probably just there to fill in some of the low mids. When I was producing it, I probably wanted to just kind of glue everything together. But now we've got some guitars. Let's have some fun. So let's... Uh, oh, this is... I think this was with, when I still had the Ignator. What a great amp that was. I really missed that amp. Um, so I'm going to call it Guitar 1. I'm just grouping it. Pull that up. Now, I have DIs with this, so when you're mixing, when you're mixing, uh, feel free to use the DI um, and reamp it, if you like. So call this Guitar 2. Okay, pull it up here. Um, do, 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 do. And let's have a listen to them. <laughs> That also has a lot of chorus on it. This was my, definitely this track was definitely my 80s kind of retro. You know, I'm, for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge John McGeoch fan. Great, huge James Honeyman Scott fan. Love those guys. Huge Johnny Mar Marr fan. I just love these kinds of parts. This is probably more John McGeoch. Not too worried. Uh, yeah, the keys are a little lost. I'm not too worried about what they're doing at the moment. I just kind of got the, I just high passed them and threw them in there.
So I think all we really need to do on those guitars, because as you can see, they're quite driven and quite compressed. So if you look at that going into the box, there's nothing to worry about with the dynamics. Um, we can have some fun with these DIs and maybe put some reverb effects on them and stuff like that. We'll, maybe we'll come to that later if we have time. Um, we do. We are interviewing Paul Willie Green in a not too distant future today. So thank you, Bruce. I'm glad you're enjoying the uh, the production. We will be doing this in a two part series. So stay tuned and come back for more. If you haven't already, please like. We'll do another giveaway now for a year's membership of the Academy. What do we want to know? We asked about headphones, didn't we? So if you use speakers, those of you that use speakers, um, um, those of you that use speakers. What speakers do you use? And if you don't use speakers and you only use headphones, now's your opportunity to say, I don't use speakers, I only use headphones. There you go. And this is to win a one year's membership of the Academy. If you're already an Academy member, we'll give you an extra year. And of course, if you're a lifetime member, which there's many of you watching are lifetime members, we will, of course, give you any course you like from ProMix Academy. All right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm actually going to copy this plugin up. Oh, it's actually a story. I'm trying to do it. So I'll go and create a mono. At this time, I'll get a stock plugin. I won't say comes free when you buy your DAW because that's offending people. But it's, <laughs> I'll bring in the stock plugin and uh, get uh, uh, the stock EQ, which is here. And we're just going to wipe out, say, 120, 150, something like that. We'll go 127. How about that? Oh, wrong one. I went and went to the wrong one. Oh, silly me. All right. Here we go. I'll just sharpen that point up a little bit. Okay. And I'll do that on both of those guitars. So please hit the like button and tell us what speakers you use. And if you don't use speakers, what headphones do you use? And this is for a free one-year membership to the Academy. Now, I've got two synths here and a glockenspiel. Let's bring those up. So I had that out because because when I was playing the guitar that wing when I was playing that I I realized I wasn't outlining the bing bing dong 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 so I used the glockenspiel the only thing I'll say with the glockenspiel is it's a little thin and pointy so let's uh let's give it a little bit of a crunch now I saw uh, Shersney talking about uh, lo-fi so why don't we go and see if we can get the lo-fi plug in I thought it was under other. Maybe it's under harmonic. Here's the lo-fi. And let's just distort that glockenspiel. I think that's adding almost like an extra harmonic to that guitar, isn't it? Like, bing, bing, dong. Oh, Travis just gave me an idea. Travis says that Glock sounds a lot like a delay effect. It's nice. You know what you made me think of? Let's put a delay on it. It's adding so many artifacts, it's great. So many crazy artifacts are being added. So thank you. So now we're going to grab a delay because 
that was the great idea that I was just given. Thank you ever so much. Thanks, Travis. So let's get a delay. Um, do, 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 do. What's the most generic delay we have? Uh, what is the most generic delay? Isn't the air dynamic delay, isn't that? Can't say comes free. Stock. I do play a lot of Yamaha guitars. It's just, you know, one of my things is, is like, things are, is like, you can tell I have a SSL console, I have Poltec EQs, I have all kinds of mics, Neumanns, uh, you know, some classic Neumanns like U47s and RCA mics and all these beautiful things, but I also have a lot of brand new stuff. And we're mixing through an Audion ID44 at the moment. We're talking through a Lewitt uh, microphone. And I think it's the Pure. It's like one of the cheap ones. And um, I am using expensive headphones. I do love the expensive headphones. But generally speaking, I love gear. And it doesn't always have to be expensive. And Yamaha, I've just always liked that company because when I was a kid, it's all I could afford. These are pretty amazing headphones to mix on. Yes, Odyssey headphones. tucking in a little bit let's add that that big paddy synth ah oh, lindsay won what did lindsay win another year woohoo uh these are twelve hundred dollars i believe these headphones not quite 2k they do have some 2k ones though i've never met jeff lynn would love to he's one of my heroes I kind of like that synth being, ah, oh, it sounds almost like a Mellotron. It's got some movement from left to right. I wonder if we can go nuts on that. Hmm. What do we have as far as sound field? Is there, yep, Pan Man, here we go. Let's see what this does. Let's see what default this does. Makes it more interesting. That's far more interesting, isn't it? So let's just pull out a bit of low mids from it. Again, EQ, closest thing we have to stock. Um, 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 back to the stock EQ. You can use any stock EQ you have. So get rid of the low lows out of the way of the bass, out of the way of the kick drum. And I'm thinking like five or six K, maybe let's go to six. Make it a little gentle. Get rid of some of those low mids, there's gonna be a real build up in that area. So take, go to about 300-ish. It was cold here yesterday. It was seven degrees Celsius yesterday. Seven, which for us is, I know it's only seven degrees above zero, but above freezing point, but for us, that's cold. I 
Oh, I like the uneven panning. That's just me. I like it. All right, let's throw in the other synth. So that's interesting. That synth is just... Bzzz. Some of these synths may get nicks, nixed. They may not appear. You know, minus three in East Sussex. I love Sussex, though. It's 8.30 at night in Sussex. My, uh, I just got back from Sussex, but I was in West Sussex. Um, I was there three weeks ago. It was lovely. Absolutely lovely. Um, let's, let's, let's do something I never usually deal, but do, but when it comes to sometimes these pad sounds, I do actually use uh, wideners. Shh, don't say anything. Warren didn't say that. He never uses widening plugins. Shh, didn't happen. Did not happen. Uh, so here's our leap wing. Let's just pull the center down. All right, well, that's useless. There's no width on this whatsoever. So I don't know if I want to just get in there and start messing with the phase just to prove something to myself. I think I think with this this sound, it might be good to see how it works with this one. So this one, we ended up like losing some of the low lows. What I'm going to do is this now. So I'm getting rid of all the high end on that sound. Get rid of the center one. We don't need it. Nothing wrong with the center one, but the, the sound was almost entirely mono, so there was nothing I could do with it. Now I'm going to do the reverse. So I'm going to grab an EQ like this. So now I've taken those two sounds, which are completely sitting on top of each other, comp didn't know what the heck to do with them, and made them one sound. So now there's no high end or high mids in one sound, and there's no low end or low mids in the other. Now let's put our pan man in. Okay, throw our drums in, and we should make a live drum group of the elements that we've got so far. So let me quickly do that. Uh... This is kind of, I know it's got those two samples in it, but it's, we're going to call this live drums so that when I need to pull it up, I don't have to keep, I can group, bring it up in one group. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two synth that, synths that I combined and make them just one group. So we'll put them together. And so let's call them uh, synth um, chorus. Okay, it's a pre-chorus and a chorus. I'm just going to say chorus, but they're in there as well. Okay, just needs a name for me. And then uh, let's group them to one stereo fader. So we'll call it synth chorus, even though it's not the only thing in the chorus. It's just for me for the time being. Um, okay. And then I'm just going to, again, let's go and use some stock plugins. Stock, not free, because you have to pay for the DAW, so you can't call it free. Stock plugins. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having too much fun with that. Um, so here's the stock plugin.
I got to about 7k and it felt good. I don't need anything. I do, Karen. I do uh, often high and low, low pass delays all the time, yeah. Especially on vocals, because I don't want that tick, tick, tick. If it's like, I don't, I don't want, don't tick, 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 tick. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll low pass that so you don't get, don't, 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 tick, 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 all that stuff. So, yeah, for me, that's quite often what I do on delays. All right, let's throw in the bass. I think I'm going to add a little 3K to the bass sound. Again, we'll go for a stock plug-in. Why do I... Every time I have to start again, like, I forget what it's called. Okay, here's the stock... I just boosted 3K like crazy to get that. Da, 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 da. Glad you like the snare. It's interesting, like the kick, dun dun dun, the kick going ga 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 ga, and the and the and the attack on the bass now are kind of linking together really nicely. All right, let's bring in those guitars again. Thanks, Alec. Yeah, we do love using stop plugins as much as possible. Um, and then uh, the glockenspiel might be too loud. Oh, I love 70s progressive rock. It's my favorite thing in the world. Have you not noticed with my King Crimson and Genesis videos? I love 70s prog. Anything Cure like as well. Now, we're going to pick this mix up again next week. And there's possible I might go back to those guitars in the back of my mind and not use the amp. I might actually go back to the DI and make it a bit more edgy. Oh, Glockenspiel reminds me of Mike Oldfield. Oh, that's I, I'll take that all day. Tubular bells, yeah. I like all Genesis. Sorry, I like it all. Duke is one of my Duke is one of my favorite albums. Um, just such a masterpiece. I know it's 1980 and it's a weird crossover, but it's like the combination of the of the best pop songs ever. You know, somebody said to me the other day, he goes, stop calling it 13-8. It's, you know, um, it's 7-4 seven, it's seven, and 6-4. And I'm like, yeah, that is one way of counting it. The only reason, if you're watching now, I called it 13-8 is because Mike Rutherford calls it that. Right, Rutherford calls it that. Sorry, Rutherford. Mike Rutherford calls it that. And I feel like the guy that wrote it says it's in 13-8. I'm just going to kind of go with him. So I just didn't feel it was disrespectful to tell him he's wrong about the song he wrote. Either way, it's a brilliant guitar riff on Turn It On Again. But I, I like all Genesis. I don't care how pop they are. I don't care how prog they are. It's just, and all of their solo records are phenomenal. I mean, God bless them. Yeah, Mike and Mechanics, bring it on. Bring it on. I mean, it was just such a great time for music when people were experimenting. I mean, all the Peter Gabriel solo stuff is some of my favorite records ever made. Phil Collins' solo stuff is phenomenal. All the Tony Banks' solo stuff. Mike and the Mechanics, and of course, Genesis pre, you know, with, with uh, um, you know, with Peter Gabriel and with Steve Hackett and with Anthony Phillips right at the beginning. If you haven't heard Anthony Phillips' solo stuff, go out and buy it. It's the, he has uh, three albums called Private Parts and Pieces, which is all like beautiful guitar playing. Go and buy it. Go and stream it. Go and download it. Private Parts and Pieces, Anthony, or Anthony Phillips, as we would say. Yeah, maybe some more delay on it. Um, the only thing I would say, Tim, is I'm going to... Um, 
I'm, I'm going to... I, I think I'm going to come back and do a DI. I think next week when we open this song up again, I think I'm going to put like a... Uh, um, take the DI and make that guitar more edgy and less driven. So it's more like ding, 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 a little less. <laughs> Let's just throw in Lily's vocal without any effect. Thanks, Maxine. I really appreciate it. Hey, Maxine, if you haven't, please download the um, multitracks. Download them and try it. Yeah, she's an amazing singer, Shersney. Yeah. I presume it's Shersney. I, my wife's cousin um, has the same name. What vocal mic did I use? It was either... It was pre... It may have been the LCT 940, because that was our main mic along with the U47. It's either a U47 or the LCT 940. We were, This is seven years ago, so it was right when we discovered Lewitt, and we were one of the first people, I think we pretty much were the first people to discover them, and we really started pushing for them. Um, yeah, Maxine, download the, download the multitracks. For those of you that haven't, please download your... Um, yes, she was here earlier. I will ask her how to uh, to pronounce it. There's a, her last name is her surname is Bukovetsky, and uh, you should hear Americans pronounce that one Bukowekiaka. <laughs> yeah, Bukovetsky. Yeah, thanks to you. Oh, Dazzle Rebel, yeah. So download these multi tracks, um, and we will review this for all the Academy members. Definitely download these because we will review them. And we'll talk about the mix and we'll all kind of help each other. Yes, and as Tim says, please slash the mic button. I'm going to run to the bathroom. And for those of you who are Academy members, you know what happens now. The great Eric Von Derrickson, His Highness, Sir Eric himself, gets up and tells one of the funniest jokes you're ever going to hear in your entire life. And his hair is looking very spectacular today. Yeah. He was late, so he obviously spent some good time getting his hair done. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, uh, <laughs> Maybe I should learn from this. Come on, joke of the day with Eric. Oh, joke of the day with me. Um, did not prepare for this. Did not prepare at all. We are closing to the uh, the end of the stream, by the way, because we have to hop on with uh, Paul Willie Green Womack. Do a little quick interview with him, who has a course coming up um, in the new year. I am swell, running on little sleep right now. So, which is ironic because I, I feel like when I'm running on little sleep, I'm like on the ball because I know how tired I am. So I'm like overcompensating. And because I'm overcompensating, I'm just doing a better job than when I'm wide awake being lazy. <laughs> um, I had, yes, Tim, you are right. I do have mail of jokes. I have a lot of jokes. Tim's hooked it up with a lot of jokes. Um, let me find that quickly because I typically have it open ready for some of this throwing under the bus keeping you all entertained you're right I can sleep when I'm dead I shall work away while I live <laughs> let's see find a joke find a joke mm 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 mm, -mm. Okay, just to not keep things dead silent, what do you call a guitar moving? Oh, this is bad. <laughs> Which is probably great for me. What do you call a guitar moving? You call it, I don't even wanna say it. You call, you call it walk and roll. I'm sorry. <laughs> Walking with a second. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, walk and roll. I apologize. Sincerely. <laughs> and this is what I do at the breaks. 
Yeah, I know. That's just uh, the view. Viewers are going down. Viewership has gone down immensely. I should. I am very ashamed. I I am very sorry, everyone. <laughs> I know that was. Uh, this is what I do when I'm under pressure. I don't have anything prepared. I just like open it up. I see one. I just say it, and and this is the result of it. Oh, when is Warren's book being released? Uh, within early next month, I sometime next month, I'm sure. I don't know if it's early, mid, late, but next month. And the book looks epic. And I have I'm in some photos. I didn't even know about that. Warren's like, Eric's in here more than I am. It's like all part of my plan. I'm losing subscribers. No. Come back. Warren's gonna come back and just everyone's gone. Uh, is the book a biography? No, it's more of a um, like a lessons book, a curriculum. Um, just everything, recording and mixing with stories, which is really cool. But um, it's very uh, educational and a coloring book. <laughs> Um, yeah, there will be some signed copies for sure. Yes, Mark. Mark's just here for the jokes. All right, this one, I'll, I'll bring up an oldie. An oldie, but a giddy. Academy members will know my usual jokes. I just kind of like recycle. But I, I got I to gotta end it on something. Um... Let me see. I know I've I've got too many here. And I want to find one specifically for my Trekkie fans. How many Oh, okay. That that is. That, that, that I I think I remember it. How many ears does Captain Kirk have? This is for the Trekkies out there. Don't quit your day job, I know. Go out with the bang. How many ears does Captain Kirk have? What is up? <laughs> I know some of you guys. Some of you guys already know. Uh, it's not gonna be any with the bang. Yep. The left ear, the right ear, and the final frontier. Boodooms. A five-year mission. <laughs> this is really why Warren just keeps me around, just to kill the time. Kill you all with awkwardness. Awkward silence. Terrible jokes. They hate it. They don't want me around anymore. Oh, Eric Ewericky. Your views went down below. Oh, like, no. I, this was a mistake. No. Oh, <laughs> people left. They left. They left because <laughs> Eric told a joke. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. He's still upset him. <laughs> yeah, I've dropped dramatically. <laughs> yeah, I really have. <laughs> they said we love his hair, though. Oh, come on, people. Oh, because of William Shatner. What was your joke, Eric? Uh, I, I, had, I had it end on... Like, end yes, on. my book will be on Amazon, Alan. It's coming out in January. We, we were hoping to get it out for, for the Christmas break, but it didn't happen. What was the joke? Uh, I had it end with a good note, so I threw out the... the what was the joke? Uh, how many ears does Captain Kirk have for the Trekkies? Uh, how many ears? How many ears? How many ears? You don't remember it? Ooh. I know, I don't know this one. Ooh, I can get you. Uh, how many ears? Uh, how many ears? Oh, no. Uh, I don't know how many ears. He's got the left ear, the right ear, and the final frontier. Oh, <laughs> that's so bad. <laughs> no, final good. frontier. That's a good one. Mega Fantastic says, I'm the best. Are you a better joke teller? teller? We, I think we need better joke tellers here yeah. to not scare everybody off. All right, let's have a quick listen where we left off. Yeah, thanks to you. I'm never my All right. 
I'm going to do one last thing. Because, uh, Yeah, thanks to you. I'm never my I just feel like the Glock's a bit loud. Um, and I think I'm cranking the Glock on purpose to try and get some more attack out of those guitars. Because I'm thinking the Glock is going to, which is why I recorded it in the first place was to get a little bit more um, down, down, hear more of the movement in the melody. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the um, distorted guitar down really quiet, okay? You're probably thinking, what, what are you doing, Warren? Well, here you go. I'm never my and I'm going to put a reverb on it. You're thinking, what? I know, and I'm going to put a stock <laughs> reverb. Don't want to get this wrong. Stock reverb. One second. There you go. I'm never Put on each one of those. So now I've taken that. I'm never my I'm like fame okay, now I'm going to pan opposite the DI of each one of these. Like so. And I'm going to get a Sans Amp plugin, which unfortunately I don't know if is available in other DAWs. Is it? Anybody? Can anybody tell us? Is the D is Sans Amp available in other DAWs, or is it only what comes with? Can't say free. Comes with. <laughs> I'll let that go in a minute. I'm never my I'm like fame hell to the fuse. You're making me burn. You're making me burn. you make me burn. I'm never my I'm like fame hell to the fuse. You're making me burn. You're making me burn. you make me burn. I'm never my I'm like fame hell to the fuse. You're making me burn. You're making me burn. you make me burn. I'm never. I just, I think there's just more movement to that. There's just more movement. So let's copy that down over there. listen to this I think I like that a lot. It's probably a Glock. Put the drums back in. Put one of our synths in. Drum, the, the guitars are getting a little loud. Jim Scott told me, the great Jim Scott, said that the last thing you mix is always the loudest thing in the mix. So I'm, keep that in mind, so I'll start bringing it down, because otherwise otherwise I'm going to open up this mix next week, and you're all going to be laughing at me. You're like, Warren, why is that the loudest thing in the mix? So before we go, last thing, please hit the like button, and then I'm going to do one more giveaway of a year's membership at the Academy. Bass. Um, so please hit the like button. Um, thank you ever so much, everybody that's watching. If you haven't already, please download the multi-tracks. We can do this um, next week. You'll all have it. And maybe you've mixed up as far as I've got. 
And if you're an Academy member, please put them up in the Academy forum. Is there a forum created for it yet, Eric? I don't think so. Can you create a forum for it, please? If you're not already a member of the Academy, please join us. There is a link to join there. It would be absolutely amazing to see you in there. And you can mix the track and put it up in a forum and we will mix critique it for you. Also, Anita's pointing out the track's not in the multi-track section yet. Eric. Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and as Tim says, join us. We do love the Clang Helm. It's an amazing plugin. Thanks, Sean, you rock. He just says she's been busting Eric since 2018. I think it's longer than that, actually. I think it's longer than that. Did Soft Cling originally, a uh, Soft Clip Pin? originally come from limiter or A to D or D to A? That's a good question. I think um, the first one I remember seeing was on the Apogee down there, which was built, this one was built in 1998 and it had a soft clipper in it there. So my humble opinion is it probably came from that. James is already in the academy. So please uh, download the multi-tracks and mix them. I love Maine. Absolutely love Maine. I'm a huge lobster fan. Who doesn't love Maine? All right. I'm not sure if I prefer that guitar sound or not, but that's, that's for me to find out next week. Thanks, everyone who joined in. Please download the multitracks. Please mix them for yourself. Tune back in next week, and we'll see what we've got. Um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Hit that like button. Leave us any comments and questions below. Join the Academy if you haven't already joined. We'd love to see you in there. And thanks, everyone. So long, farewell, la vie de Zay and au revoir. Adios, we're about to interview Paul Willie Green, the rather wonderful Mr. Paul Willie Green. So that's where we're jumping to now.